We're finding artifacts of new technologies. I feel strongly that when they have the Arctic melting, they will not just find resources that they say they're looking into from all sides. The Russians, the Chinese with the Belt and Road initiatives. Also the Americans want the foothold into the Arctic. And we will find applicable new technologies that are built on artifacts that could be alien, that could in fact be from Atlantis. As you know from research, documents of Atlantis were found and then brought into safety and looked at by experts. And this is where it links up with the ancient guidance and the fine-tuned energies and light beings that can mentally guide us to the right conclusions and the right decisions. Now, with Neptune in Pisces, for another six years into 2025 and Saturn joining it there, we're looking at ancient aliens, at alien astrology as well, and the artifacts that were found. <coughs> when a scientist works on an alien craft in some secret installation, he doesn't necessarily know if the craft is ancient, has been found a long time ago, or if it crashed recently. We have to give space to interpret these things. The fact is, the scientists are working on alien crafts and they're reverse engineering them. This has been going on for at least 30 years that we know. We have a lot of evidence about things that I'm talking about in my book Light Seeds. And of course Arthur T. Clarke in his famous novel 3001 The Final Odyssey he even speaks about the ability of the extraterrestrials to hide and cloak planets. John Lear told us that there are at least 20 planets he thinks he was told between Mars and Jupiter and elsewhere that are cloaked planets. We cannot see them. Similarly when we look at an eclipse we just had a moon eclipse in line of Pluto in Capricorn. We're actually looking at a hologram because if you could use highly sophisticated telescopes and objectives and special lenses, we would actually be able to see what's going on on the moon, on the side facing us, like alone on the dark side of the moon. There are installations the size of huge cities towers, big structures, power stations and we don't really know who lives there. Most people think it's the Greys but the Nordics have told me there are many extraterrestrial groups, different kinds, who actually use the Greys to run their errands to do whatever jobs they have to do. And those groups are very varied. I don't know how many exactly there are. There are the Syrians, the Pleiadians, the Arcturians, the Nordics, you name it, at least a dozen of them. And as this astrology moves, as we move into the future, we're going to learn a lot more about what really surrounds us, what's going on, and things that have been so far, you know, controversial because we're lacking definitive proof in some of the claims that the contactees are making. We need to understand that when you're a contactee that begins really in childhood, there aren't any people who all of a sudden, let's say at age 20 or 40, become contactees. Usually they are contactees from early on, maybe two, three, four years old. I remember from about age eight, nine for certain. And so there are these different kinds of contacts we're having. One is telepathic, other contacts are hardware contact where a scientist works on a craft. And then of course there's the visual contact that the pilots now have with crafts or things that they're seeing. And we don't know of course whose crafts those are. We know they're not human, they're not from here obviously. They fly with techniques and technologies that are something of the order of a thousand years ahead of us. We know we're near yet mastering anti-gravity and the kinds of propulsion systems they're using. And this is 
where the technology of mankind has to take a leap. How long this will be until we are in a new world of the technological kind, I don't know. I would estimate something of the order of 50 to 100 years. This is not something that we're going to quickly discover in 10 or 20 years, so we'll have to see possibly Uranus go around the zodiac one more time, 80 years or more, until actually we will have a humanity, <coughs> a mankind that uses different technology, different energy forms, different transportation form, a totally new science, a different physics. These are the things I've discussed in my book Light Seeds 12 years ago, and many interesting and important influential people have studied the book, they're still studying it now, 12 years later, and watching my documentary series where I have merged astrology and the alien contact. Because the extraterrestrials themselves, as I explained, they use astrology as navigation instruments. To them it is not some art that you can believe in or not believe in, it's actually a science, a mathematical science that serves them as markers in this cosmos so they know when and where and how to do their travels. So we're approaching a time now where we're going to interact more with their science and their knowledge. All this has to do with knowledge. I don't like it when people say, oh, should I believe in it or not? That's okay, if you don't know, you keep believing or not believing. But once you know certain things, or once you've seen certain phenomena, you're beyond the question of belief or not belief. You're then in the knowledge of things we may not understand yet, but if we see crafts, we see crafts. And if we see objects on the moon, then we see them, then it is something that becomes our knowledge. This is what we want to do with my series, is open up the knowledge so we progress, so we go further in our quest of extraterrestrial knowledge. And with Neptune in Pisces, this is a very interesting time to cut through the disinformation and later with Neptune in Aries, after 2025, we'll definitely be engaging a new kind of knowing.